Hey guys, welcome back to another video today talking about the so-called For the People Act, also known as HR1, which is a really big deal. Um, insofar, it is, it is ridiculously crazy, and it is brazenly bad for the Republican Party, and by doing so, bad for the country, no? So let's keep it rolling here. If I highlight over HR1, you'll be able to see very easily that... Um, it's nondescript, very basic, right? But we'll see what it has, in, you know, inside. So, just for context, this is how they're marketing this this stuff. All right, the For the People Act, ensure the right to vote, which is already a thing, and the reign of big money. Huh, I wonder how they're going to do that when they get the big money donors themselves more than Republicans do. Tackle corruption. Yes, leave it up to the politicians, the politicians to tackle corruption. All of these people are incumbents, by the way. Next, fix our broken democracy. What the hell does that mean? So, let's look into what are parts of the voting rights so-called. The bill would require to offer same-day voter registration for federal elections and permit voters to make changes to their registration at the polls. Okay, what does that mean? Well, typically in states, you can have um, people register to vote up to, like, let's say, a week before the election or a couple weeks before the election. Why is that important? Because Democrats know that if they were to loosen up the rules, it basically allows for more of their votes to trickle in. Now, this um, isn't necessarily fraud, but it is um, going to confuse the system because you're going to necessarily have, you know, typically, if you had a clean election, you would say in Florida, there's about 3 million registered voters. So we would expect, let's say, 2.5 million votes but if you have this you would have not only the three million but also let's say another two hundred thousand that will register to vote that same day and then it'll be like okay now we have 2.7 million votes and now you say well that's over 80 percent of the turnout that doesn't even that's highly unlikely that's fraud and maybe it isn't fraud but it'll confuse people a lot so insofar as the coherency of a federal election it won't help and in terms of the morality of it i don't know this is kind of ambiguous honestly and um, thirdly, it doesn't benefit Republicans, so I'm against it. First, yeah, that's 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 one thing. Um, also, it would require states to hold early voting for at least 15 days, and it would establish automatic voter registration. What does that mean? So, ostensibly, it means that you can early vote for 15 days. So the early vote, overall on aggregate, at least in the 2020 election, benefited Democrats. So again, that's them helping themselves there. And insofar as it comes with Republicans, it'll be at the detriment. And for example, Republicans tend to do better at the end of their races. You know, you know the polls tighten, the fake polls tighten, but the, the, the races tighten up and benefit the Republicans. So the earlier the people can vote, the better it'll be. For example, if you got rid of the early votes and had all those people vote on election day, Trump would have won even without the shenanigans accounted for, okay? Now, insofar as we are moving on to the next sentence, I'm going to cover this, and it is necessarily <clears> – it will make automatic voter registration for individuals to be eligible to vote in elections from federal office in the state. What does that necessarily mean? Well, automatic voter registration just means that there's a bigger pool of voters for the Democrats, so they'll have more leverage when it comes to ballot harvesting and all this, you see. When you do universal voting, universal mail voting, unsolicited ballots, you're going to have ballots sent to every eligible person, but because like 40% of the people that are eligible to vote won't even bother voting, there's going to be an extra like hundreds of thousands of ballots a state that they could use to potentially harvest off, rig, whatever, forge a signature on, etc. So this is just another way to increase their cheating capabilities. Let's say with that, Pennsylvania would have gone like four points for Biden because because of all that harvesting it's you know whatever that's my guess now it would make election day a federal holiday so that would basically enable people to vote more often which i don't know if that would negatively impact republicans but i'm assuming because it is the democrats that are pushing it it doesn't help us so probably against that too the bill would also authorize 16 and 17 year olds to pre-register to vote in advance of them becoming 18. This is a bad thing for us considering the fact that 16 and 17 year olds are liberal on average and therefore if they register to vote they're slightly more likely to vote in general which then leads to them um, either being having their votes harvested by universal mail-in voting or or they're going to have uh, they're gonna have more incentive to vote and that's gonna hurt Republicans either way. 
a proposal by Representative Ayanna Presley, who is like Mr. Clean but Black. Yeah, she's missing the hair. Anyway, um, it, it would allow, this amendment would allow 16-year-olds to vote, and that didn't succeed, thank God. Um, the bill would also prohibit the practice of voter caging, which is to restrict, to to uh, purge the rolls. The rolls are important because you need to get rid of people who died, okay? If you go to prison, you need to be off the voter rolls, right? I mean, just common sense stuff like that so that they can't cheat. Because if you have people on the voter roll that are dead, that's where the dead voters for Biden come from, okay? So if you have, let's say, in the state of Georgia where there's like 30,000 people that have died but haven't been cleaned out yet because it takes years to do that thing, then theoretically they can use those 30,000 through mail-in voting and harvest those votes and use them for Democrats. So in the case of voting caging, um, if you get rid of that, it'll screw over the Republicans twofold, okay? Because not only would you get the dead votes of the people within the, the last five years, but you would also um, get the dead votes perpetually going forward, which would be a... The shit show. That would be terrible. Uh, okay. Also, uh, let me see. What else? It would restore voting rights to felons who complete prison terms. Now, this one, unironically, is debatable for me. If you're a felon and you do your time, then you should get a restoration of your rights, right? Well, what about guns? What about this? What about that? Okay, well, see, that's, that's interesting as a predicament. But, I mean, if you think about it this way, a sex offender can no longer go to a school property, of course, um, forever, I'm pretty sure. And so if that's the case, then you should also lose your right for voting forever, if you extend that logic. So, and plus, I'm pretty sure felons vote Democrat, most felons are black, and if you just put in the demographics, I mean, they're probably going to vote Democrat, by and large, so this is a bad thing. Also, felons are not good people in general, so I don't want them voting. The bill... Okay, this is so-called election security, by the way. Um, the bill contains other provisions, such as voter verified paper ballot provision, mandating that the use of paper ballots that can be marked by voters either by hand or without or with a ballot marketing device and inspected by the voter to allow any errors to be corrected before the ballot is cast. Okay, what does that mean? The bill would also require state officials to preserve paper ballots for recounts and audits and to conduct a hand count of ballots for recounts and audits. The bill would require voting machines used in all federal elections to be manufactured in the U.S. So this does seem on paper, get it, um, a good thing, right? Paper ballots and um, allowing audits. But at the same time, all the rigging up here would not be able to be saved by the audits, I think. So on aggregate, this is bad still. And... Um, there's probably some, you know, BS in there that'll like negate the good so far in the election security. Campaign finance reform. The bill would match small donations six to one in a ratio. Okay, so if I donated five dollars to Mark Kelly in Arizona, it would match as thirty dollars, which is weird. Like why? Ugh. It also incorporates ca campaign finance reform provisions from the Disclose Act, which would impose stricter limitations on foreign lobbying, requiring super PACs and other dark money organizations to disclose their donors and restructure the Federal Election Commission to reduce partisan gridlock. This would overturn Citizens United or support a constitutional amendment. Okay, now this is an interesting take. This is somewhat what Andrew Yang supported in 2020. The thing here that I want to point out is that uh, just the government uh, matching small donations doesn't seem like a good precedent to set. I mean, it's completely arbitrary, the six to one, first of all. And second of all, um, requiring super PACs and dark money organizations to disclose their donors. donors. Well, that might seem like a good idea on the surface of it. A lot of people would rather not be on a, on a list that the government has access to, so I don't agree with that part in general. Now, in terms of ethics, the bill would require the president and the vice president, as well as president and vice presidential candidates in the future, to publicly disclose their previous 10 years of income tax returns. The bill would also eliminate the use of taxpayer money by members of Congress to settle employment discrimination claims by requiring members of the Congress to reimburse the Treasury for such payments. Another part of the bill would require the Judicial Conference to establish rules of ethics binding on the Supreme Court of the United States, the only court in the U.S. without a binding candidate of uh, a binding canon, canon of judicial ethics. Now, here's the other thing here. Um, 10 years of income tax returns, that seems like a good idea. Now, the problem with this is it's just income tax. I want all of it. So this is a good half step. I don't disagree with that. Um, employer discrimination claims. Here's the thing. I feel like this is going to be a cudgel against Republicans 
in the future where they're gonna say like oh wow you said you, you called me a faggot wow you, i'm gonna sue you and it's like whoa or oh wow you said you said a, a slur to an employee now i'm gonna sue you it seems like lawfare it seems like the opening to lawfare so i don't like this the legislation would also set new rules and limitations on presidential inaugurations. Inaugural committees would now be barred from taking money from corporations. A contribution limit to inaugural committees would be 50000 per person and would be imposed under current law. There's no limit. Contributions of more than 1000 This isn't a big deal in the first place, but I guess that's, I guess that's a good idea. Statehood for D.C. What the hell does this have to do with anything? H.R. 1. Nobody's talking about statehood for D.C in this bill and yet it's still there so um this would huh so that's a terrible idea that would have two democratic senators and like a congressman i think so that's going to be just terrible for republicans overall uh the bill would thwart gerrymandering by requiring states to use amendment commissions independent commissions to draw congressional lines so this is against gerrymandering, but the problem is is that gerrymandering in general, I would say, helps Republicans. So this would, this would screw us. Um, the independent commission would over time become more populated by liberals and therefore would, you know, screw over Republicans long term. Okay. Num names of federal election commissioners. Um... I don't see anything in particular with this. Now, of course, it has endorsements from all these BS leftists, of course. So that's not a good thing. Okay, so that's the HR1 bill. It's looking pretty damn terrible, if I do say so myself. We have John Peter Sabros Sabranes, who is sponsoring this. This bill, by the way, passed the House, apparently, 234 to 193. This is a big issue. Why? Well... In the House, that means that some Republicans voted for it, I'm pretty sure, which is gay. And this was introduced, by the way, in 2019. Now that they have the majorities, illegitimately as it may, they do have both majorities in the chamber now, sort of. And they're going to try to push this hard. And this passed in the House 220 to 210. So this was more or less a party line vote. Not good. Gross, even. Um... There should have been Democratic defections, but of course the Democrats are going to be partisan and are going to vote against it. I mean, for it, sorry. And this is not a good thing. I think this is going to, if this does pass, which I doubt will, it will, um, this will definitely hurt um, Republicans. In fact, I think, if anything, um, that, you know, you know, let's not talk about, you know, let's... I don't know, maybe I'll get censored for it, but overall, let's just say, hypothetically, hypothetically, wink, wink, that the 2020 election was fortified. I would assume that this For the People Act would double the effect of the fortification. So in this case, North Carolina would have gone blue, uh, Florida would have gone blue, uh, Ohio would have been closer, stuff like that. Ultimately, I think this will basically allow people to add a couple percent to the Democratic column by basically enabling higher amounts of voter harvesting, ballot harvesting, mail voting, the voter registration thing, felons voting, younger people registering to vote, which is just BS in my opinion, and among other things. So this bill seems to be like 85% garbage, 15% reasonable stuff. Um, very bad. Also, DC is a provision in this bill or something like that. So that's going to be a bad thing for Republicans. And, you know, not all Republicans are good, but, you know, compared to the Democrats, holy cannoli, they're fucking, wow, it's a big difference. So, yeah, I just want to say that this bill, I don't think will pass. I, I'm pretty sure this isn't under reconciliation and therefore would then be, um, under the jurisdiction of, uh, of, uh, I believe it's, the filibuster and if that's the filibuster then of course the republicans are going to vote against it um and if they do pass it somehow through the 60 votes the republican party is dead not only would they be morally bankrupt but they would also lose elections going forward by a bigger margin than before therefore this is a big deal and it's got to be stopped this bill is freaking terrible and 
don't think for a second that because it, oh wow well the president's an 80 year old white guy with the dementia there's no way he'd be that progressive or socialist but apparently yes this is the case or the people around him the people in control is what i'm saying are going to be the ones that are you know being insane crazy this is insane the for the people act needs to be shut down and of course they're going to name it that like the patriot act or the cares act it's all garbage it's a malarkey frankly so complete disavow i hope they don't vote for this we'll see what happens in the senate thank you and goodbye